Interstate 77. Yeah. All right, Interstate 77 is a pretty cool road. It is very much an Appalachian road. It goes through a lot of cool mountains in North Carolina, Virginia, and West Virginia. Let's take a look at the route. We are going from Columbia, South Carolina, all the way up to the shores of Lake Erie in Cleveland, Ohio. You're watching Control City Freak. This is the YouTube channel where we talk about interstate highways and the places that they are assigned to go to. If you dig this kind of content, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're really into it, why not hit subscribe? So today we are going to talk about northbound I-77. Northbound I-77 begins here in Columbia, South Carolina, or just outside of it, at an intersection with I-26. We see I-77 is signed for Charlotte right from the jump, which is the correct choice. You meet I-20 on the outskirts of Columbia, we get 20 signed for Augusta and Florence, 77 for Charlotte still. On the mileage signs, Charlotte is on the bottom line, and at even small interchanges, Charlotte is the control city. So it looks like we got Charlotte on lock in South Carolina. Welcome to North Carolina. I wonder if it'll be as simple here. <laughs> One mile into North Carolina, we meet 485. It is signed for suburbs, which for a three-digit interstate is fine. We see 77 is still signed for Charlotte. Now we are meeting 277, the Interloop Freeway in downtown Charlotte. Going northbound on 77, we really don't see the Charlotte skyline very well, so we'll take a look at that on the southbound video. And here is where we meet 277 once again, the inner 277 loop, south 277. I think we'll probably take a look at that on southbound too. Here we are meeting I-85, and 85 is signed for Spartanburg and Greensboro. Surprisingly good control cities for North Carolina. 77, though, is signed for Statesville, which is significant because that's where you meet I-40, but we probably should have something else here. We meet 485 again, and it is signed the same way as it was before, but maybe with different suburbs. We see Statesville is the sign on the bottom line here. At intersection, Statesville is for northbound. I don't think I'm giving any spoilers telling you southbound will be Charlotte at this point. And we meet I-40. We have a downtown exit for Statesville and 40 for Winston-Salem and Asheville. This is super weird though. We don't even get an overhead sign for I-40, one of the biggest interstates in the country and the one with the most mileage in North Carolina. Kind of weird. Probably the most important intersection in North Carolina it's not in a city. However, I do see that this is major construction at this interchange, so I imagine these signs might change to proper overhead ones. And we see we are now on North 77, Withville. Yet, the very first mileage sign we get, no sign of Withville. We get Elkin and Fort Chiswell. And at intersections, we just get Elkin. Ah, North Carolina, you're gonna make me post the meme again. 77 Elkin seems to be the control city they're using at non-interstate junctions. We meet US-21 just around Elkin, and now we're signed North Mount Airy. Why? We don't get to Mount Airy. On the signs, though, no Mount Airy. We get Fort Chiswell and Withville, which are both in Virginia. Now we meet 74 East for Winston-Salem, and we have our Mount Airy exit, the only one we get. And, of course, in North Carolina, we are forced to sign 74 for these next few miles to Virginia, where it will graciously go away again. We are in Virginia. In this area, it is North 77, Withville. And we see Withville on the bottom line here as well. As we go through these mountain ranges here, I forgot to find the Virginia sign, but there will be one in the southbound, I assure you. Here's where we meet I-81, and I-81 is signed north for Roanoke, and south for Bluefield, Withville, and we get the country's most famous wrong-way concurrency. Here's a look at that concurrency, and not only is it a wrong-way concurrency with interstates, it's a wrong-way concurrency with U.S. highways, one of which is signed north when normally it's an east-west one since it's even. We get our split, we get South 81 Bristol. This should absolutely be Knoxville at this point, not Bristol. I get what they're doing here with Bluefield and with Bristol. These are both small towns that also happen to be on the border, so both states can sign it. Virginia signing Bristol and Tennessee does as well because there's Bristols in both. And we're doing the same thing with Bluefield. Bluefield, Charleston, West Virginia, next exit. And fortunately, we do have that Charleston listed there. Having that there kind of covers the Bluefield thing. Here in the mountains, Bluefield is 30, and I assume they mean that is Bluefield, Virginia, which is a little strange because you have to drive through Bluefield, West Virginia, and cross into West Virginia in order to get there. Beckley, 68. Eh, put Charleston on there. We go into a tunnel here. 
Meh. And we continue to go along rolling hills in the Appalachian Mountains. It's a beautiful looking drive here. We are going to meet another tunnel, and this tunnel actually goes under the state line, or through it, I guess, because the actual state line would be on top of that mountain ridge right there. Here we are at the actual state line, but in the tunnel they have no demarcation from that whatsoever. Even the pavement's the same, kind of weird. On the other side of the tunnel, though, we get our one and only exit for Bluefield, and we are now on 77 North Beckley. We get a welcome to West Virginia shortly after that. Here's some more lovely mountain roads on the West Virginia Turnpike, and we see Charleston on the sign, so that's good to see. We will get to our first toll plaza in two and a half miles. Stop ahead, pay toll $4. Uh, well, okay, if that gets us all the way to Charleston, I guess that's not too bad. I took a shot out of the back window here. Really nice looking mountain road right behind us. And we get this really cool bridge up here on these ridges in West Virginia. Kind of reminds me of the Blue Ridge Parkway over I-70 in Kansas City, but a little more majestic, I suppose. And we meet I-64, which is signed for Lewisburg. And we're kind of already in Beckley, but we're going to be signed for Beckley. These are terrible choices. This should be rich Richmond and Charleston here, not Lewisburg. Here in Beckley, a couple miles down the road, we will now be on 6477 Charleston. Finally. Here's the shot we started with. Beautiful mountains here. And also it um, packs. This is County Road 23 halves. Uh, County Road 11 and a half in disguise. I'm, I'm not sure. 23 over 2? Oh no, now we gotta pay 425. We're up to 825 now. It's getting kind of be an expensive toll road here. And we go through some more beautiful scenery, not a lot of exits. And ah, a third toll! 425! Wow! 1250 to drive this road. That's expensive. And here is what the toll booths actually look like. All of them kind of look like this, so I'll just show you the one. And here we are crossing the Chuck Yeager Bridge to get into the Charleston metro area. West 64, 77 North, Charleston, and we're not too far from Charleston now. Here's a look at downtown Charleston. And now we're on 64, 77, 79, Huntington, Parkersburg. Okay. See, 64 West Huntington, that's just fine, I think. Huntington's one of the bigger cities of West Virginia. Parkersburg, though, I don't feel like it should be Parkersburg there. And on 77, we now meet 79, which is signed for Clarksburg. Why? Why don't you sign Morgantown, West Virginia? It's still in state. You can be in state provincial and sign a city that people might know about. Clarksburg. Why? Here is the actual split. North 77, Parkersburg. I, I think it should probably just be Cleveland from this point, honestly. Parkersburg is 73 miles away, so we don't have too far to go, and we'll drive through some more nice mountain scenery. Charleston and Parkersburg are the control cities you get at random interchanges on this road. And here's some more beautiful mountain scenery. I gotta try this 77 one. Now we're hitting US 50 downtown. No reason to tell us it's downtown Parkersburg. That's just so obvious because everybody knows Parkersburg. Clearly, that's the only downtown they can mean. In Parkersburg, we are annoyingly signed North 77 Marietta, Ohio, which is not far at all and Come on, you're gonna sign some other state's weird provincial control city, West Virginia? Why? Here we are crossing the Ohio River, and welcome to Ohio. Here at the only exit for Marietta, we get 77 North Cleveland. So Ohio is not messing around too much. We're gonna sign Cleveland right from the start in Ohio. You see Cleveland's on the bottom line here. 77 North Cleveland, Cambridge. I'm fine with Cambridge being there as long as Cleveland is as well. On the exits in Cambridge, we see Marietta, South and Cleveland North, so it's still signed for Cleveland at interchanges. Get a nice Cleveland overhead sign here, pull through. And Cleveland remains on the bottom line with Akron right before it. However, once we get to Canton, things are a little bit different. Now we are signed 77 North Akron instead of Cleveland. And you know what? I like that. Akron is a big enough city to be kind of a control city, but it's not big enough to sign over Cleveland all the way across the state. I think you gotta sign Cleveland further south. But now that we're only 20 miles from Akron, yeah, why not? Here is a look at downtown Canton. And we get into the Akron area, we see 77 Alt North because there's some kind of construction going on. Now we get 77, 76 for Cleveland. Interesting, since 76 doesn't go to Cleveland. But I think that's the right thing to sign on that one. The Cleveland part of that concurrency is clearly more important. And now we get 76 West Barberton, which if you saw my video last week, you know my thoughts on. 77 North Cleveland, right on. And we meet 271. It will be signed North for Erie. 
which makes sense. We don't get a South 271 interchange, but Erie for 271 works here. 77 North Cleveland, we actually get a pull-through sign at an Ohio Turnpike Junction, so that's exciting and rare. 80 Toledo Youngstown, well done there. And now we meet 480 with the same control cities because it's eventually going to link you back to the Ohio Turnpike. And we're still 77 North Cleveland. We have our exit for 490 to get you 271, since there's no way to directly get on 71 from here, I believe. 77 is running out of road here. We are meeting 90 East Erie, Pennsylvania, and we're still signed for Erie East. They have no more signs for 77, even though we are still on 77 here. Here we do get a nice view of the baseball stadium, Jacobs Field, or whatever it is now, and downtown Cleveland. 90 East Erie PA, still straight ahead, and that will end I-77. So, we have finished I-77 northbound. Let's take a look at Todd's the way it should be. In my opinion, the way it should be for I-77 is Charlotte, Withville, and I've had a lot of comments about Withville, but I think I've come around. I do think signing Charleston in Charlotte would be a little weird because everybody thinks Charleston, South Carolina in Charlotte. So I understand going Withville there for the I-81. And then from there, I would say Charleston, no need to sign Beckley. And then Cleveland. I just go Cleveland, and then from Canton, sign Akron like they do, and then sign Cleveland again. That is the way it should be, in my opinion. Alright, thank you so much for watching this episode of Control City Freak. I really appreciate it. Be back next week with more Control City content, and I am excited to see you then. My name is Todd, and keep on trucking.